We are called a narcissistic generation. We are told that technology and social media are giving us an inflated sense of self. But most of us don't walk around feeling like we are all that great. In fact, there is one underlying emotion that overwhelmingly shapes our self-image and influences our behavior, and that is insecurity. In their research, psychologists Robert and Lisa Firestone found that the most common self-critical thought people have is that they are different, not in a positive sense, but in some negative, alienating way. Whether our self-esteem is high or low, one thing is clear. We are a generation that compares, evaluates, and judges ourselves with great scrutiny. By understanding where this insecurity comes from and how this viewpoint affects us, we can start to challenge and overcome the destructive inner critic that limits our lives. As children, we must feel seen for who we are in order to feel secure. According to Dr. Daniel Siegel, author of Parenting from the Inside Out, the key to feeling secure is feeling safe, seen, and soothed by our early caretakers. Whether children are being shamed or overpraised, they are most likely not feeling seen by the parent for who they really are. They may start to feel insecure and lose a sense of their actual abilities. As we grow up, there is an internal dialogue that starts to accompany these feelings of insecurity. This is called the critical inner voice. The critical inner voice is formed out of early experiences in which we witnessed or experienced hurtful attitudes toward us or those close to us. As we get older, we unconsciously adopt this pattern of destructive thoughts toward ourselves and others. Throughout our lives, we maintain our insecurity by listening to our self-critical thoughts. This is what real self-critical thoughts from real people sound like. You're so stupid. Nobody likes You're you. You're just a joke. You're just too old. You're such a loser. You're so obnoxious. No one ever notices you. You don't have any friends. Look at you. You've gained all that weight. You're fat. You're so boring. You're so ugly. You have a weird voice. Look at you. You're so pathetic. You're no good. There's something wrong with you. There's something really, really wrong with you. These thoughts can affect us at work. You're under too much pressure. You can't take it. No one appreciates you. You have no real talent. Why not just give up and forget the whole project? When are you ever going to get a you're real so job? Lazy. Nobody respects you. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to get fired. These critical inner voices can creep into our relationships. Women just don't like you. No one is ever going to love you. It's your fault if he gets upset. You can't trust anyone. You're never going to find a boyfriend. You're just annoying him. Nobody likes you. She doesn't like you. He doesn't love you anyway. He obviously doesn't love you. The thoughts pop up in our parenting, too. You're a terrible mother. Look at your kids. They're you mad. never know how to make them behave. What's the matter with you Why anyway? Why is he crying all the time? Wow. You really screwed your kid Kids up. just don't like you. You're just like your mother. This voice tends to get louder as we get closer to our goals. Oftentimes we react to these thoughts before we even realize we are having them. We may grow shy in public, pull back from a relationship, or project these attacks onto the people around us. Just imagine what the world might actually look like if you could live free of this prescribed insecurity. Once we have a better sense of where our insecurity comes from and the profound influence it's having on our lives, we can start to challenge it. We can start by interrupting the critical inner voice process. The first step is to identify when these voices creep into our heads. We should then write the voices down in the second person. Instead of writing, I am so stupid, you would write, you are so stupid. This helps you to separate from those vicious attacks by seeing them as an enemy instead of your real point of view. Once we get to know our negative thought patterns, we can see each thought like a train passing. As it gets closer, we can notice it, but choose not to board. Start to think about the insights you have into these thoughts. Do they remind you of anyone or anything from your past? This will allow you to feel some self-compassion and reject these attitudes as the truth. Next, you will answer back to your voice attacks, expressing your real point of view. Write down rational and realistic statements about how you really are. Respond to your insecure thoughts the way you would to a friend, with compassion and kindness. When you get to know your inner critic, you can start to make a connection between how your insecurities are influencing your present day behaviors. How do they affect you at work? With your partner? As a parent? Make a plan to change these behaviors. If insecurity is keeping you from asking someone on a date or going after a promotion, 
It's time to do the actions anyway. With change always comes anxiety. Your defenses and critical inner voices have been with you your whole life and they can feel uncomfortable to challenge. When you do change, expect the voices to get louder. The critical inner voice is like a monster. Don't buy what he's selling. Don't feed the monster. Your insecurities won't vanish overnight, but through perseverance, they will start to weaken. Once we realize our own strength and value, once we can feel for ourselves and the ways we've been hurt, we can start to live free of our inner critic. We can shed the insecurities our past laid out for us and become the people we want to be.